No price talk and no Lambos. This is not another crypto podcast. Welcome to Ignition. I'm your host, Gillian Gotzel, and each week we will be looking at the problems solved by blockchain. I'll be going deep, deep with the people building the apps and communities which are changing the world around us. Good morning and welcome to EOS Dublin's podcast, Ignition, with me, Gillian Gotzel. Now, today I have a very interesting guest, a uh, guy from the UK by the name of Luke Brenland, also an unusual surname, Luke Brenland. Where does that come from? Uh, it actually comes from Finland. I'm Finnish. Well, no I way. was born in London, but my great great granddad is Finnish. Brent, okay, I didn't realize. I, I thought at first it was Brennan, like a good Irish name, and then Brennan, hmm, Finnish name. Nice. It, it's, it's actually been changed, so that's not the original spelling either. <laughs> so, so. it, yes, I can imagine. Uh, yeah. Yeah, that's cool. So, your role, you are the head of the VA, the Vibe Ambassadors, and the community manager of Uptrend. We're going to talk about um, this really exciting media platform. But first of all, I want to go backwards a bit because you're seven months in the industry and you're loving it. We're very happy. We're going to talk about that later as well. But you're backwards a little bit. You did engineering in college and you are a multi trade builder. What was that like? At times, very hard work. And it took me a lot of patience and uh, persistence to sort of. Uh, get where I, I am today with my skill set. You have six skills, six tra- master trades under your belt? Yeah, I, I, can, I landscape, I also do electrics, I can plaster, do carpentry, I can do plumbing, I fit kitchens, bathrooms. Uh, wow. I might so, have yeah, a little job. <laughs> you can move to Ireland to help you with a little job, I think. Yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> wow, so you're a very, that's interesting, you're a very hands-on man. All the skills that you've mentioned there are very much, you know, literally hands-on, you know, skills, the physical skills. Obviously, there's intelligence involved too as well, but they're very physical. And yet you... Oh, you're too kind. Well, no, no, you, you can't, you can't, you can't <laughs> wire a house if you have to know what you're doing. You might kill people. So I, I think there's certain <laughs> skills there, both, but, but, but it's a very strong reliance on the physical side of things. But um, you're also a bit of a techie head as well. That's an unusual combination. Tell me about your first love of technology. Do you know what? Uh, I'm actually called Luke because of Star Wars. My dad is just a huge tech fan since the since the 70s he remembers watching star trek and he was talking about mobile phones back then they had them on star trek these little flip phones and oh, yeah. so my my passion of technology actually comes from my dad uh, wow. uh so everything i grew up with like obviously i grew up with like playstations and all this sort of stuff and so it just always blew my mind. And then watching stuff like Star Wars, thinking one day that we could be this species that goes out into space and like goes to other planets. That just, I love that. That is just, that just thinking about that makes me happy. Do you know what I mean? So yeah. it's like, so it, it is a big passion for me and all sorts of technology too. AI, big fan of AI and self-driving cars, what Tesla's doing. And I, I love all this sort of stuff because it, it's kind of like looking at the future now kind of thing. Mm. Um, I suppose we are jumping so fast. I mean, I recently learned um, about singularity, which is the point where oh yeah, where AI becomes pervasive, so that every you know, and it's not that machines will overtake humans in their intelligence. And someone else said to me at the same time, trying to explain this concept to me, and they said, well, you know, like an or- a machine can be an ordinary machine, but if that machine has got machine learning and AI and access to all the data of all the machines in all the world, guess what? That's more intelligent than your average person. It's more intelligent than Stephen Fry, you know. So Definitely, it's, it's coming at a rate of knots down the road to us. All this technology. It's not. I mean, I mean, even the space travel that that's been up the yeah, ante recently in terms of the commercial flights that have been set up. So yeah. you, you know, you're what age are you? May I ask, Luke? What, what age? Bracket? I'm twenty eight. Twenty eight. So you're, you're you're young enough to that this stuff should should be in your lifetime. I hope so. I really do. I really do. Or if not, I hope by the time I get to my 60s, 70s, 80s, there's some sort of technology where my brain can live on and I can still see it. Ah, <laughs> that's cool. Yeah, that's, that's clever. So tell me then, when did you discover, like you mentioned AI and uh, I mentioned machine learning singularity. When did you discover blockchain? Do you know, uh, my story of blockchain is actually a bit of a sore one. I was working in Leicester doing a restaurant fit out with my brother and a few other uh, fellas. And one of the fellas there, he very intelligent, always up to date. And he kept talking to me about this thing called Bitcoin. He was like, Luke, you've got to check it out, honestly. He was like, this guy has just lost his hard drive. He's lost thousands of pounds just because of this Bitcoin. So you've got to look at it. And I, and I never bothered. I, I was like, I was too engrossed in learning my trades and 
And I just thought, oh, do you know what, mate? It's just probably another thing, like everybody else. Mm. And then a few years later, it started to really take traction. I thought to myself, God, he was not wrong, was he? <laughs> <laughs> so I opened my eyes then and I thought, right, now it's time to sort of start paying attention to what's going on here. But I'll be completely honest, that in about 2016, when I started really looking at it, I struggled with the whole concept of a wallet and trying to store it and all this sort of stuff. And and I won't lie, because of the things I was mixed up in with my work and all this sort of stuff, I just thought, I just ain't got time or the mental capacity to really go through all this sort of stuff. Um, I was investing in stocks and shares, mining companies, gold. So my investment side has been there for quite a few years uh, by this time. But come 2017, I thought, right, this is it. I'm going to put eight months of research into this, find out what it's all about, and I'm going to get involved. I just missed the boom. Just missed the boom. <laughs> well, sometimes <laughs> it's a good thing. I mean, I know I, too, attended a talk back in, I don't know, six, seven years ago, and it was a talk about Bitcoin, and I was so preoccupied with my life. You know, I was fighting banks yeah. and fighting divorce. Yeah, your story is amazing. Well, uh, <laughs> it's, it's I don't mean in that sense. I'm, no, I'm no, in the sense. Of... No, 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 no. <laughs> I totally. I hear. I'm. I'm just. I'm just being. Uh, I'm just kind of going. I like my story better now. It's turning out better now. But, <laughs> but, but I wish to. I had. I had listened more more carefully. You know that six seven years ago. Then mind you, if I had of, I wouldn't be where I am now today. So sometimes there's there's a reason why we're on a path and why we come this route and not the other route you know so this is because if you'd have earned all that bitcoin then you wouldn't be working with uptrends you see so you'd have, you'd yeah have, you'd be some some horrible man driving around in the lambo <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh i got here first <laughs> i wouldn't like you at all then <laughs> so in this journey too as well i'm going to about uptrends in a minute but i'm, I'm talking more about you you've run yeah, even sure. right as well so this is another another this is very interesting because again there's you a master builder and again, you do not associate master builders also being interested in technology and then learning they can write. How amazing is that? Do you know, uh, it's funny, all this diversity sort of started up. My, my dad is very diverse and I take a lot of, I, owe, I talk about my dad a lot because I owe a lot of where I am today to my dad. So, and it's, it's like, I sort of, in my early 20s, I got into the whole spiritual sort of trying to have a good soul and be a, it's just a good person to the world, <laughs> not just to yourself, to everybody. And yeah. and that sort of taught me that we can do anything we want. As long as we believe and we know that it's what we want, we can do it. It doesn't matter where you come from, who you are. As long as you believe and that's what you want, you'll get there. Wow. So I kind of use this attitude in all my aspects of life kind of thing, I kind of look at things and if things seem a bit too difficult at the start, I think to myself, look, just stick with it. In a year's time, you'll look back and think, huh, that's all history kind of thing. So That's a very powerful, you're right, because people think they're going through, you know, as Churchill said, if you're going through hell, what do you do? Keep on going, you know, and yeah. if you're going through a tricky time, whatever. And you think you'll never get past it. But it is actually, you look back a you know, week, two weeks, two months, a year or longer, you go, wow, I got through that. You know, or or I learned that it, it might be a horrible thing, it might be just a, a challenging thing. But you're very true. It's it's if you can keep on going. Obviously, if it's a thing that you want to do and you're not hating it, but if it's a thing that you want to do, keep on at it. And um, when you look back and go, look how advanced I've come, how far I've come. That's a very very uh, mature, sophisticated observation. A very good life. Well, well, thank you. I, to be honest, do you know, I, I kind of see all these amazing people out there. Like Elon, I'm a huge fan of Elon Musk, and and I think like look at what this guy has done. You know, he's he he was involved in PayPal. We made some money and he started Tesla. Tesla didn't really go that well for a year. Everyone was saying to him, oh, you're just going to fail. Stop it. Just stop wasting your time. Now look at him. He's he's building rockets to go to Mars. <laughs> <laughs> Have you booked your place on yours? I mean, your dad maybe is booking his place. <laughs> I've got a bit of brains and a bit about me, but I'm not sure if I'm that brave to be the first person to step on the planet. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, well, I, I listened to an interview last year of a Trinity professor who had signed up for a mission to Mars. And I forget who was doing it. It wasn't yeah. uh, uh, Tesla and it wasn't, it wasn't Elon Musk and it wasn't um, Richard Branson. It was somebody else. It was, like, it was like a commercial thing and they were going to go out there and build a community. And basically what he signed up for, if it happens, it was, there was a, he was on the short list, whatever. A young man, man your age, whatever. And he was saying that, um, it was a one-way ticket, and he oh, wanted. Wow. And I remember thinking, "Oh my God, I got goosebumps now." If that was your, that was your boyfriend, or that was your child, you know, or your brother, mm -hmm. 
And he's like going, I really want to go. This is what I, what I want to do. Wow. So I think there's a, there's a certain mentality that would have you on a one-way ticket. You know, maybe, maybe yeah, you have to do here in, in, in the world, Luke. Don't, don't go to Mars. <laughs> <laughs> Some good stuff here. So speaking of which, you're going to bring on two nights, the, uh, the Uptrends. Now, it was founded by Jeff Kirk. Kirdakis. 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 Sorry, Kirdakis. I got the wrong emphasis. Kirdakis, who is a Canadian. Am I right? Yes. He yes. Is, he's from Edmonton, Canada. Okay, and I did interview, I spoke with Jeff and actually interviewed him some time ago when I found oh, out no. about this site, uh, Uptrend, because I went, because I've been looking, I'd, I had done some work on Steemit, and again, I'm a producer of content, I'm a journalist and broadcaster and stuff, so I produce a lot of content. I was looking for ways to monetize it and to share it and to look for other platforms and like-minded people, blah, blah, blah. And I, I found Steemit difficult, and I think, you know, one of the reasons why I found Steemit difficult is you're going to answer why Uptrends is different. Uptrends, by the way, has got two N's, U-P-T-R-E-N-N-D-S. So it's That's the one so I found when I was on Steam, it, I when you're on a new platform, it's you can be very vulnerable. And although I know I'm a, I'm a good writer and, and I know I've got stuff to say, but you always kind of go out: Are people going to put me in the stocks? Are they going to throw rotten eggs at me? Or do they want to hear yeah. this story? And, and I mean, and I would consider myself, you know, quite battle hardened. And you know, I've got I do have a neck like a, a jockey's, you know, whatie sometimes. <laughs> and, um, but I but but I'm still vulnerable. I'm still a human being. I'm still yeah, not immune to thinking. Oh, they're going to tell me like I'm going to put my story up there. You were like, yeah, it's a great story. People would be like, oh, what is she on about now? <laughs> you know, <laughs> to know how are you going to be taken? So you have in uptrends, people, in Steam, I found I felt a little, little bit alone. I didn't really feel the love, shall we say. I felt like, mm, yeah. and then I found it clunky, whatever. But on uptrends, you say you make it a point that um, the Vibe ambassadors, they, they have a huge job to do. Explain what, what they do. Yeah, sure. Um, the Vibe ambassadors for me are the heart of uptrend because they are, they are the heart of the community. Whenever somebody new joins, when everybody, uh, when whenever somebody posts OC or just posts in general, they are there to welcome, talk, chat. These, uh, like if you used to talk to uh, the uptrend community about who Elena is, literally everybody would know who she is because she She's just so nice. does She's an nice. amazing job. Well, so and yeah, this is it. So um, uptrend, we we want to build a community. We don't want a platform. Uh, where just people come and just share stuff. We, we want people to be united, know each other and get to know each other and take time to sort of understand uh, what each other's posting about and this kind of thing. Because uh, we, like you say, we've all been there. You get on the other platforms and you don't know anybody. You post, it gets left empty. Or if you post something a bit controversial, a lot of people have something to say about it or they don't like what you're saying and, and it can just go real bad, and that can put you off following your passion a lot of the time too. Mm-hmm. So and it's also because this is a new industry. Uh, I mean, I know it's going ten years, or the, the and blockchain is older than that. But it's still people are, are finding their way, and it's quite scary for a lot of people. I think because the status quo says you know it's all to do with the dark net and dark web yeah. and Ponzi schemes. So there's a lot of a lot of warning things going on. There have been scams. A lot of money's been raised. A lot of it's been lost. So there's a, there's a lot of uncertainty, and it's like. But people, I think, increasingly want to be drawn to this whole sector, whole industry, community, whatever you want to call it, because there's something there. There's something more than, than exists in this current world that we live in. There's a, there's a bit of a hope. There's a bit of community. is a huge thing. It's very attractive. But it's quite scary. So that what your vibe, so your vibe ambassadors on the side, their job is to really reach out to people and say welcome and yeah, yeah. High fives. That's, that's- the platform for them is the most important thing. So they will be around, they'll be active, they'll pick up new people to make them feel welcome. Uh, they'll share their opinions. They'll also post too, they post too. Uh, mm-hmm. But you will literally go through every post and I can 80% guarantee you will see one of the Vibe Ambassadors either there or get in there. Because uh, yeah. they have a lot, of, they do have a lot to cover. And to be honest with you, for me, they don't get spoken about enough because they do so much and yeah. they are such an awesome team and they make people feel so welcome and that is just the biggest part of uptrend you can come to uptrend and you can automatically be part of the family you don't have to wait months or go out and message people like hey i just joined this platform it'd be great if someone do you know what i mean would come and upvote my post or like my stuff read my stuff and yeah it's just no like, we don't want that we we want that community we love it when the, the biggest reward for us is when people turn up and they're like, do you know what? I really like the fact that everybody's so welcoming. I just feel at home here. That for me is the biggest reward. 
It is very, I have to say, I'm, I'm honest, was it three weeks now, I think? I think I started, I had a bit of a hiccup, and I stopped. And then I've discovered it's terribly addictive because you get up, <laughs> upvotes. And I'm like, oh, have I got any more upvotes? Oh, how many points? Can I level up? <laughs> so can we just explain a little bit this? You post two types of content, is that correct? It can either be original yes. or reposting someone else's content. Yes. You, there are a few rules if you're sharing other people's content because we, like, we always like the original artists to be contributed and to be recognised. So, Excellent. Okay, uh, so you take it both and you reference it to someone else's work that you're sharing. And yeah, then, then they have to share the source link and all this sort of stuff. So everybody on the post knows that there is an original post from somewhere else. Right. Uh, we honestly have the content creators' best interests at heart. We, As we speak at this moment, we are currently in the middle of working on something new to make this even better and oh, to make it more secure for uh, authors, writers, content creators, because yeah. we want this platform to be for them too. Uh, it's interesting. I discovered too on Steam when I was advised by somebody to break my post into 10, 10 different pieces and I get more chance and more votes, whatever. And I'm going, mm. but my piece is meant to be read together. It is. A, it could be long form yeah. journalism. It could be a shorter piece, but you're not, you're not meant to dip in it. It's not a cartoon. It's not a graphics novel. It is an article. So I found that quite frustrating. So I quite like the idea that you're going to reward people and, and, and I create content. That's what I do. So for me, I'm going, yes, yes, please. That's really cool. And then so people, and they, they level up the whole time. I'm on level eight now. I think, oh, it's so addictive. Oh, wow. and, you're, uh, you're getting there very you're getting quick. There. <laughs> yeah, well, and it's just, it's just just from content posting, but I do generate a lot of content, so it's, and I like sharing it too as well. So for me, it's nice, you know. Did you know that now you're level eight? You're also your upvote multiplier is also higher now, so you you're earning more upvotes from just one. Oh wow! Okay. So every excellent. every time you level up, your upvote multiplier for your rewards goes up zero point one each time. Oh, I understand now. Okay, it's it's very addictive. It is addictive, I have to say. And then and then these points then can be uh, swapped out in for actual for uptrend points, which are valued at about what was it two cents? You were saying a point. At the yeah, moment? we're fluctuating between about two cents and about a, a cent and a half at the moment. But we literally just got listed on IDEX yesterday. So. Wow. Uh, wow. And we're on a few other small exchanges. They're not that popular. So IDEX is our first popular kind of exchange well done. did it cost stuff. a fortune to get on or are the exchanges behaving better these days <laughs> do you know what i won't say too much but uh, so far we've been okay but some of the offers we've had are just ridiculous yeah, to be honest yeah. With you. <laughs> well, so. well, and there has to be some sort of, like, <laughs> sort of normality in that area it's common sense so that is yeah. brilliant so the tokens are listed in idex but most people are hardly aren't they they're kind of enjoying just earning the points yeah but to be honest with you, we've uh Looking at the stats about how many points get locked in and all that sort of stuff, more people actually prefer to level up and mm. invest in their self and get a higher uh, reward back later on. Oh, you, can, you can use your points to level up, level up as well? Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah. Oh, I don't want to do that. I just want to earn it from my writing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a meany, meany, meany person. I don't want to do it the other way around. That's but if you think about it, if you used to get to level 20, yeah. you would get uh, free upvotes near enough for your one oh, so every so time i upvoted you, you once you get three points so the clever thing actually would be to upvote to use my points to, to get up to level 20 that's it yeah well th- there is no limit on the levels uh, 20 the is, 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 a, is a good marker oh yeah definitely i mean you're doing double uh, your upvotes then so if you get to 20 i'm on 21 and i get about about three points for an upvote so Wow. It almost wow. doubles by the time you get to level 20. So, yeah, it, it does It does make a lot of sense to, okay. to work on your stuff. I might look well, at that. <laughs> this That's is strategy. another thing. Strategy. <laughs> <laughs> this is another thing that we wanted to, to sort of provide to everybody, that people can invest in their self, and it does pay off. Yes. Uh, we want people to invest in their self. That is the, the most important investment in the world, investing in yourself. Wow. I tell you, I, I love your whole attitude. I think it's just brilliant. And I'm going to finish this interview now, Luke. And I'm going to say, I have to say, we were, we were chatting a bit before I pushed the record button. Yeah. But you're, you're a very happy man, aren't you? <laughs> Am I right? Uh, I, I try to be. As long as the sun's out, I'm happy. <laughs> well, you have to move country, though. I think it's that sunny in London yeah. the whole time. <laughs> no, you oh, are I've been looking at the Caribbean. No, I'm joking. <laughs> so but you, you are, I think you, you, you were saying before we, got, we started recording that you actually... I just love what you're doing now you, and you've given up the day job you're doing this full-time you're all in basically yeah I, everything emotionally i'm 100 uh, percent very happy I, i've 
well, like I said earlier, it, it's kind of weird. It seems like your whole life, you know what you want to do, and and then uh, you find yourself on a path, and it just feels right, kind of thing. And wow. uh, like I always, as a as a kid and a teenager, learning my skills and stuff like that, I always thought I'd be like my dad. But mm-hmm. I've gone in the completely opposite direction, and and I love it. I'm so happy. I literally, I wake up and straight to work because it's not work it's building <laughs> something <laughs> that is brilliant i tell you you are a dose of medicine whatever it is or i don't know what, I can't, i'm using the wrong I'm, my, my words are failing me now you're a tonic you're a tonic sort of <laughs> it's brilliant so listen, thank, thank you, you so much for your time today luke so and if people want to go and experience and don't, don't you don't have to be a writer you can share and just read and and yeah, of course. I mean, i'm obviously coming from a writing perspective and you Bef- more recently uh, uh, Bef- you know, before we go so, yes. sorry can i butt in and just say one last thing for everybody sure it you don't have to be a writer you don't have to know how to write it doesn't matter if you have a passion then by all means do it just yeah. do it Come and join. Exactly. So I think you, you can you can be part of the community, read other stuff, engage, share stuff. It doesn't doesn't have to be writing. It's um yeah, it's just the interaction and say the passion for um for everything to do with cryptocurrencies and blockchain. Yeah, yeah, but you and, will literally find all the new latest news right at your fingertips, all in one place too. Perfect. And the site again is uptrends.com and uptrends sorry dot com it's u p t r e double n d dot com uptrend dot com. That's the one. Brilliant. Thank you so much indeed for your time today, Luke. Thank you. It's been lovely chatting to you.